Hello Valued Viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today's viewer request is, Cap, did you realise that during the 1982 Falklands conflict, Argentina had a serviceable aircraft carrier? She never used it, but what if she did use the carrier? How would that look? Mid-1982, the British imposed an exclusion zone with a radius of 230 miles. You can see it marked out here. Argentina was prohibited from entering the exclusion zone. During the hostilities, we'll remember that the Argentine cruiser, the General Belgrano, was sunk by a British submarine while at the edge of the exclusion zone, 230 miles away. This action is why, of course, Argentina didn't use her navy for the rest of the conflict. Before we go any further, let's do some research and find out which aircraft carriers were active in the theatre. As usual, our research has been done by our friend Raven. You can find his link in the video description if you want to check him out. He's also going to start doing some after-action reports from these war games, which should be interesting. So, 1982. Argentina had one aircraft carrier, the ARA Vientesinco de Mayo. They purchased this ship from the Netherlands, where it was HN LMS Corral Dorman, who in turn purchased it from Britain. It was a British ship, HMS Venerable. It was a Colossus slash Majestic class carrier, designed in the 40s and built in the 50s. In 1982, she could carry up to 24 aircraft, a mixture of A4Q Skyhawks, an S2 Tracker anti-submarine aircraft, and seeking helicopters. During the Falklands conflict, only eight A4s were on board the carrier. Argentine Navy A4s were equipped with legacy AIM-9 Sidewinders along with unguided bombs. And it was the A4s from this carrier that sunk the Type 21 HMS Ardent in the Falklands Sound during the San Carlos landings. Though they were not flying from the aircraft carrier at the time, they had moved to land bases and this carrier was called into port for safety. Out of interest, as she returned to base, HMS Splendid, a British submarine, almost attacked her. Next, the British had two aircraft carriers in the theatre. First, the flagship and our biggest carrier, HMS Hermes, a Centaur-class carrier, again designed in the 40s and built in the 50s. During the conflict, she carried 800 Naval Air Squadron, consisting 15 Sea Harrier FRS-1s. The FRS-1 was the first variant of the Sea Harrier, an air superiority fighter, and number one squadron RAF, consisting six Harrier Ground Roll 3s. These were used for attacking positions on the island, and 10 seeking helicopters. Hermes was operating at the limit of the aircraft's range to keep her safe from Exocet anti-ship missile attack. The Sea Harriers were using AIM-9 Lima Sidewinders and the Blue Vixen Pulse Doppler Radar. The Harrier GR-3s could carry two AIM-9s but were primarily used for close air support and ground attack. They probably wouldn't be used for ship contact. And the second British carrier, of course, HMS Invincible. Relatively new at the time, built in the late 70s, served until 2014. At the time, she was carrying eight Sea Harrier FRS-1s and 12 Seeking helicopters. She was actually approved for sale to Australia prior to the conflict. HMS Invincible was more modern but smaller than Hermes. So those are our carriers. So the question was, what if the Argentine carrier attacked the British? Well, what would have happened in real life is, of course, if she had entered the exclusion zone, she would have been spotted relatively easily. She would have been attacked by British submarines and turned around or possibly even sunk. That's a pretty boring outcome. What if the submarines didn't get her for some reason? Why don't we just ignore the submarines? Well, then probably British would have used both of their carriers to attack the one Argentine carrier. The problem is then we've got one 1950s Argentine carrier versus 
one 1950s British carrier and a 1970s, 1980s British carrier, with the British carriers operating more than three times the amount of fighters and bombers than the Argentine carrier, based on the research we've just seen. Well, there's no point of simulating that. Obviously, the British, with those numbers and that superior technology, are going to win. So, that's pretty much the end of the video if you want to go full realism. The British just would have won. More carriers, and they had more aircraft on their carriers. But you guys want to see a fight. So, we're going to bend reality now and create a relevant but much more interesting and fair fight. So, what we've done to create a more fair and interesting fight is this. We've got one Argentine carrier strike group. Against that, we've got one British carrier strike group, an invincible class. We're going to pretend that the Hermes strike group stayed northeast of the island for safety. Numbers of aircraft as well have changed. Rather than operating the actual numbers of aircraft at the time, we're going to operate at the limit of what these carriers could carry. They're both in the 20,000 ton class. They could both carry a maximum of 24 aircraft. The Argentines have crossed into the exclusion zone and Bullseye is set 170 miles from the centre of the islands and HMS Invincible has sailed out to meet her. Let's first look at the British. One, Invincible class carrier. Aboard her are 24 Sea Harrier FRS-1s. All are AI and set to max skill level. The first 12 to take off will be air to air, aiming to gain air superiority so the air to ground could go in afterwards. Playing them today are actually more modern AV8B Harriers. Kinematically though, they're more or less the same. They are carrying, as they probably would do in real life, four Sidewinders. They're slightly more modern Sidewinders than they actually carried in real life. They carried Lima models in real life. Here they're carrying the next step up, the Mike model. However, the real Sea Harriers had air-to-air -air radar, the blue Vixen Pulse Doppler radar, the AV-8B does not. So that will help to nullify the advantage of the slightly better missiles. Also, they have a gun. It's a different gun to what the Sea Harriers had, but it's going to be near enough. The Sea Harriers would also usually operate with two fuel tanks, but they're just not needed in this case. After that, 12 anti-ship Sea Harriers, each equipped with two 1,000-pound unguided bombs and a couple of sidewinders and a gun for self-defence. Now, it's true that Sea Harriers did actually carry the British anti-ship cruise missile, the BAE Sea Eagle, but that was not until after 1985. So until then, it was unguided munitions. They are going to take off, they are going to seek out shipping, and they're going to destroy them. Escort today, four Leander-class frigates, old ships for the time, and they were scrapped pretty much after the conflict. You may ask, where were the more modern ships the British had at the time? Not modern than game, unfortunately, so we'll just have to use Leander. These ships today will be controlled by humans, so it's up to them what they do with the ships. Hence this strange starting arrangement. Finally, today's humans. Playing as a British, we have Violet and Cannonball. Say hello, guys. Hello, guys. Hello, guys. The humans today are going to start airborne 25 nautical miles behind their carrier. That will simulate them taking off. They will have infinite respawns, and they are not taking off from the carrier because they will cause problems with the AI. You guys have a choice. You can either fight as air-to-air -air with the same loadout or air-to-ground. And that's the British. 80 miles away is the Argentine carrier and her fleet. We don't actually have the Veantecinco de Mayo, but we do have a ship of the same class, a majestic class carrier known as HMAS Melbourne. Actually, Australian. But for all intents and purposes, the same ship. It has a single catapult launcher, the same weapons and the same capacities. On board her are 24 Skyhawks. Again, the first 12 are air superiority fighters with four AIM-9 Papa 5, the best they had at the time, sidewinders and a fuel tank, and two cannon. Once they've taken off, the next 12 will take off, which of course are anti-ship. Anti-ship are equipped with weapons of the time, a couple of sidewinders for self-defense, two dumb 1,000 pound bombs and a fuel tank. And her escort, four Condell class frigates. Again, originally British, then sold to Chile, then sold on to Argentina. So it's weird, we're actually fighting five British ships today, but that's the world. 
They are actually modified versions of the Leander frigate. They look relatively similar, as you can see. And of course, Argentine humans. We have Fire and Simba. Say hello, guys. Hello. Hello, guys. Again, 25 nautical miles back, infinite respawns for the same reasons. And yep, you guessed it. You can either be air to air to begin with, with the same air to air loadouts, or you can be air to ground. That's the fight. It's pretty simple. It's nice to have a low tech 1980s fight for once. No long range cruise missiles, no airborne radars and whatnot. So it's going to be a lot different to what we're used to seeing. Which brings us on, guys, to predictions. Based on what you've seen here, who do you think is going to win? It looks surprisingly evenly matched. I wouldn't want to guess. Mm -hmm. Neither would I. Uh, I'm going to uh, say the British have it in this one. Argentina. Just barely, though. It's You're going to be Argentine. I know I'm biased, obviously, because I'm British, but I'm pretty sure the British would thrash. What you've got here is a 1942 designed carrier from Argentina, manufactured early 1950s, with you know that type of weaponry what you've got here the british is a state-of-the-art for the time carrier built in late 70s with late 70s guided weaponry it's a massive change although the carriers are about the same size you've got a much more modern carrier the escort ships are pretty much going to be the same as super old kind of 50 ships in terms of the aircraft they're carrying more or less the same weapons but the Harriers are going to have a slight advantage kinematically. They're a lot more powerful than the Skyhawks. Also, the missiles are slightly better, as they were in real life. The Lemurs were better than the Pappas. So I can't really see a way that the British can lose this. But we've had so many upsets, I really don't know. So stand by. And welcome to the simulation. A couple of things. First of all, we've had a change of staff because a couple of more guys have turned up. So on the red side, the Argentinian side, it's now going to be Fire Dad, Matrix and Alex is going to turn up. Matrix, remember, um, you're going to be Naval Commander, first of all, before you get into your first plane and then okay. shift over. Against Blues, we're going to have Cannonball, Violet and Simba. And Simba, you're going to be the tactical commander, first of all. Uh, second point, if I sound very slow and dopey today, I do apologise. I've just started volunteering again for the under fives at church and immediately I've got ill again. Uh, and that's just how it works. And there's something about the planes taking off, which I'll talk to you about as I go. Anyone not ready to go apart from Alexa? Three, two, one, go. Good luck, everyone. Right, uh, let's have a look at the British AI taking off, first of all. HMS Invincible with her Sea Harriers, or our best analogue for them. Right, get those Leanders moving, uh, Simba. Roger. It's going to be interesting to see who has the best launch rate. An Invincible class or a single steam catapult. Majestic class. First Sea Harrier up. Just go and have a look at the Majestic class. Already they're slightly behind. First Skyhawk is getting into position. Blast deflector. Raising. And there goes the first Skyhawk. Now, Valley viewers, an important thing. The Harriers take off the ship fine. The Skyhawks, I can only get the first four to take off. The other 20 will not take off. So what I'm actually going to do then is spawn them in above the carrier at a couple of hundred feet at the correct timing. So what I've done is I've timed how quickly these guys take off. They take off every 90 seconds. So after that amount of time has gone, times four, I'll spawn the next four in. Then the next six minutes, I spawn the next four in. Then the next six minutes, I spawn the next four in. That's the best we can do, and it will work out about right, of course. Uh, we've also got the Condell class frigates. I think that's Matrix moving them into position. One AI Skyhawk up, one AI Harrier up. We've got Violet, Cannonball, Simba moving in fast. And we've got Fire Dad. Uh, Matrix is still controlling ships and Alexa's not in yet. So there's an immediate deficit with the Reds. But as soon as you can, Matrix, get in your uh, air to air and help them out. Second AI is up on the Harriers. So the Harriers can launch quicker. They launch about 20 seconds quicker. Ski ramp over a single catapult. You'll know which one of the humans because they don't have the correct skins on, as you can see. <clears throat> they have the uh, AV8B skins on. Uh, because I forgot to get them to download the skins. Distance between fronts of 50 nautical miles. Sea Harriers, 15,000 feet. 
we've now got three, uh, two AI and one human Skyhawk up. 10,000 feet and 300 knots. Distance between fronts now of 40 nautical miles. Now in real life, this Harrier would pretty much be just about seeing this guy with their Blue Vixen radar, but they do not have radars, the AV-8Bs do not. So that is one difference that they will have. They do, however, have information coming back from the ships, their EWRs aboard the carriers and aboard the Leanders, which is uh, going to help them find the targets. Okay, Alexa is in and Matrix is in. It's now three humans, three V3 humans. Sea Harriers still at 14, 15,000 feet. Fire Dad doing something different. And the Skyhawks still at 10,000 feet. It's up to them. They will choose their own altitude for this fight. Third AI aircraft up. And fourth, taking the catapult. <laughs> Distance between fronts of now 18 nautical miles. They'll pretty much start seeing specs now of the other aircraft. Progress check. Four AI Skyhawks up. Four AI Harriers up. Distance between fronts, now 11 miles. They can definitely see each other now. Pilot, press the G button. You have your gear down. Do not fly with your gear down. Thank you. Didn't know I had my gear down. Mm. Happens to all of us. Mm -hmm. Five AI Sea Harriers now up. Combat is beginning. Circling around each other. Who is going to see who first? First face off. No missiles fired. Both sides have all aspect seeker heads on their missiles, so they can fire head on. But it's not always that easy. Neither of these aircraft have particularly warm engines as compared to a modern fighter. Merges and a dogfight here. No one can get a firing aspect. Pilot merges. First That's missile it. of the day. Oof. On an AI target. All AI is set to max skill level today, by the way. It's a miss. Ew. That's a miss again. Good shot, Gunball. I didn't shoot anybody. They just went into the water. Embarrassing. Yeah, I, I snap rolled the safe four so hard it, it just went right in. Pilot coming over the top. Fox two. Not dodging that one. Well done, Violet. First missile kill of the day so far. Two Skyhawks down for no Harriers down. Violet may have bitten off more than chicken chew, we'll see. Oh, Violet's on fire! Two Skyhawks down for Violet, well done. Didn't stand a friggin' chance. AI on AI here. See them fight. Missile out from the Harrier. Dude, another Skyhawk down, wow. This is all going very much one way. Cannonball's got a missile out. It's a bad missile. Four Skyhawks down for no Harrier losses so far. Remember, all skill levels set the same and the humans are roughly about even. What can Alexa do? This guy's going to be in serious trouble. The next four will be coming out on the mark of 12 minutes, which will be six minutes since the last aircraft took off, which will be the correct timing. Missile out. Can I get a vector to the closest target? Nope. You can't. You've got to figure it out. So down. Five Skyhawks down. In goes Alexa. Who can see who first? Oh, that's problematic. Oh, Alexa smacked in the face by AI. Did not see that one coming. Well, here comes Matrix. Can Matrix do it? That's six Skyhawks down for no losses. Skyhawks really struggling. And AI are now closing on the surface fleet 20 nautical miles away. Skyhawks in somewhat of a trouble here. It's now Matrix facing off against Violet, Cannibal and Simba. These guys have detected the defences of uh, 
these ships, and I suppose they're going into an orbit there. AI otherwise. Four more AI have taken off. That's eight AI up now, and the next batch are coming in. Okay, here come the next four uh, Skyhawks on cue. Ah, spotted the Argentine fleet. Yes, you have, sir. Right, this is all freaking one way so far. But again, you never know. The tables can turn. Now, will the Skyhawks spot that Harrier? I fear not. Good dodge from Matrix. Missile evaded. Pretty didn't see the second one. Smash! On the cannonball. Just better flying from the Harriers today. Okay, let's see what the AI can do. AI now heading out to meet Violet, Cannonball, and Simba, and they will be short of Sidewinders now. Remember, only four each. AI going for Violet. Oh, Violet in the face. Did not see that one coming. Oh, she's still going. That's our Violet Moon. She doesn't care about freaking Sidewinder warheads. What can Simba see? What can Simba see? Simba's in a tangle now. Violet still going somehow. Fear not for long. Alexa back in play. Cannonball coming into support. Good flare and dodge from Cannonball. It's square and dogfight. Guns. Too much cool stuff happening all at once. There's another missile out. Don't know who for. Oh, and Violet finally ran out of engine. Yep. Simba's trying to locate his bad guy. Cannibal's still in his merge. He's Winchester, he just has guns. Thing is, I didn't get any warning on my RWR. Why would you? Oh, yeah, I miss her. Doesn't create any electromagnetism. Copy. Good job of pipe from Cannonball. Horizontal scissors, lateral scissors down into vertical scissors. Can't quite get his six though. I'm gonna run out of sky soon. Simba still merging with his guy. Same problem. Can't outmaneuver the A4. The A4 is a nimble SOB. Much less power, but it's still a pretty damn good aircraft when you get in a, in a low range tangle. <gasps> We've got a missile out and a miss. Cannibal flares and dodges. Good show, although he has been heavily outmaneuvered, and he's in trouble. Another more flares. Good dodge. How many missiles does that guy have? Oh, Cannonball's got two on him. Oof! Wouldn't want to be there. And they, if both of them have missiles. Missile Air spending is starting to take off. Edge of ground starting to take off. Okay, guys. Uh, right. Uh, Simba. Where is Simba? They're still fighting. They're still fighting. Oh, my gosh. See how he's getting the legs on this skyhawk. Might get the angle for a shot. 
No, just cannot get that angle. And the Skyhawk's got a lot of flares. That's a tough dogfight. Simba can't win his dogfight either. And new uh, it is. Yes, 18 minutes. So the next four are in now. Simba's fired. Oxy. Boom! Simba wins his dogfight. There will be many more. Ooh, Cannonball's dogfight's hotting up. It's almost achieved a solution. What can the Skyhawk do? No, he can't get the solution. And an overshoot. Matrix and Simba are in a dogfight now. Oof! Did not see that come in. Matrix. Oh, I popped the wrong thing. I popped, started popping chaff instead of flare. Well, don't do that, Simba. Right. Good shot, Matrix. Skyhawk starting to take down Harriers. Finally. It's taken a while. Plenty more to go. Still, the cannonball dogfight persists. I don't think either have got any missiles left. Does not have a radar assisted gun sight, so it's inertial sight only. The hitting is quite difficult uh, with both of these planes. Plus side, he is firmly on that Skyhawk 6 now. And it really is just a matter of time. Before one of those bullets connects, one of those rounds connects. If it was a true Royal Navy Sea Harry, he'd be viffing, but it uh, takes quite an experienced pilot to do that. Cannonball is being converged on, there is no doubt about it at this point. Fresh uh, FRS 1s coming in. Bogfight's still going on. Ooh. What's happening? Oh! A thing is happening, a missile's been fired. Cannonball is now in the midst of four Skyhawks and somehow still alive. I hope he's got plenty of flares. I don't think he's got enough rounds to take all of these down. At some point, he must have dodged seven Sidewinders so far. Quite the display. And here come the Sea Harrier reinforcements. More missiles. Merge another missile. Is he's out flares? He's finally out flares. Boom! Cannibal finally produced. It took one, two, three, four, five, six. Se oh, uh, blah, blah. good dodge. Good dodge. Uh, I, I kept seeing them run by in my windshield. I was like, oh, this is not going well. Yes. Good dodge. And we've got merges. AI versus AI right in the middle of the map. A couple of 1v1s. Oh, uh, Harry just took one down. Oh, lots are going on now. Dodged and dodged. Lots of dodging going on here. Or evading, I should say. Another missile evaded. This, none of these missiles are the best missiles. They will all be spoofed by flares pretty easily. He didn't see it coming. Boom! Skyhawk down. Superior fighting by the British here. Look at that! Trade! And a dodge. Power Wolf did not see it coming again. Jeez, massive merge in the middle here. What to watch? Missile out. And it's a... Oh my goodness. Uh, someone died. I don't know who it was. And Matrix didn't see it coming. Oh, it's an absolute melee mess in the middle here. So, uh, three AI Harriers have survived, and three AI Skyhawks have survived, and they battle on. Evaded. 
Some good AI dogfighting. They were doing pretty bad before, but now they've got into the stride. They're really fighting quite well. The next batch of AI are about to spawn in. They're reducing themselves down to cannon now. Here comes Violet with a fresh plane. Missile. Oh, the Skyhawks are starting to win now. They're now taking down more of the Harriers. Skyhawks are doing really, really well. Violet's coming in. Violet, someone. Miss. And hit. Well done, Violet. Bringing it back for the Harriers. Now it's three Harriers versus two Skyhawks. Things are really hotting up here. About 20 miles. New A4s spawning in. Next six minutes. Missile out for someone on someone. That's a kill. Another Sea Harrier down. It's now two Skyhawks versus two Sea Harriers. But reinforcements are coming in. Violet's in an aggressive merge. Good flares. Good missile unlucky. Uh oh. Is that a thing? No, it's not a thing. Anti shipper in. Right, the anti ship have got through. They've gone right, right through the middle. Uh oh, uh oh. A thing's happened. Oh, Violet. Oh, shot our own anti ship down. Awkward. Things will happen in the heat of battle. Someone's about to save uh, Violet's ass here. Yes, they have. The Skyhawk's down. It is anti ship. Anti ship. Now the Argentinian anti ship are out. Things are really hotting up here. First, anti ships got in, uh, got in on the Argentinian vessels. Things are definitely going on here. There's one more, one more air-to-air -air Skyhawk alive. Winchester fighting against AI. Who is fighting against anti-ship? They've seen the anti-ship, look. They've seen the anti-ship and they're going forward. And they will prioritise the anti-ship where they can. Yeah, oh, the anti-ship are fighting back! The anti-ship are, fu are shooting down the freaking air-to-air. -air. Shouldn't have got so close, mate. It's now a dogfight with the anti-ship aircraft. Who are trying to break out. This guy's dead. Boom! Last air-to-air -air Skyhawk down. Fire Dad is doing QRA scramble to shoot down the anti-ship. Remember, they will fire at you. Couldn't fire, there's too many flares in the air. Harry here, God, how the tables is freaking turning now. The Skyhawks are really chewing their way through the Harriers. I'm not sure there's really any air to air, air to air Harriers left. Although Fire Dad has let an anti shipper get through the network, he's got to atone that. Again, just can't get a solution. Oh, too many on, flares. Good luck. You won't hear the lock in the Skyhawks. Just fire it. Oh, man, there's a lot. Fire it, good dodge. Great dodge. And in for guns. Fire it's taken on the world in the middle. Oh, look who snuck through. Can Alexa stop that anti-shipper? I don't know. This fight continues. Fire still chasing a man down. But look what's happening. Look what snuck through. The defense. Got some radio control guns on those um, modified Leanders. Is it enough uh -oh. to stop this guy? Too many things, too many things, too many things, too many uh, things. Did we get a launch? Fida is trying and trying and trying, but those flares are just too powerful. But at least he's not bombing. Alexa's found. Okay, Alexa's defending against this guy. Keep the pressure on Alexa. Just don't let him bomb. The fight's going well for the Skyhawks in the middle. I would say probably the Skyhawks are winning this battle. Miss! Good flaring, sir. What a freaking exciting battle. Sea Harrier's running back in. The anti-shipper. And he's now being shot at by the radio control guns. He's not dropped his stores yet, so he's still a threat. Fire Dad's firmly got this guy on the run. I don't think he's going to be dropping any bombs soon. As this happens, boom, no dodgy. And emerge in the middle here. 
I hit him, but I didn't kill him. Roger, as long as he's not bombing, then you're doing your job. Get back in, do it again. Okay, now the Harriers, now the Harriers have taken the middle of ground again. It's switched. It's Skyhawks win, then Harriers win, the Skyhawks win. He's guys out of... Yeah, he's out of luck, basically. Now it's the Harriers that are winning. And in fact, look how many more units the Harriers have. And everything's done fair. I'm spawning these guys in at the rate that they would launch. So it looks like overall the Harriers have just done more killing. And B, they've been spawning quicker or they've been taken off quicker, which I know they have because I've timed it. They take off 20 seconds quicker per plane. The ski ramp is slightly faster than the single uh, steam catapult. So it's now all about the humans. Can the humans defend the ships in time? It's about Fire Dad, Matrix and Alexa. And here come probably the last set of A4s at 30 minutes in. Oh, this guy's coming in for another bombing run. Can someone pick him up? It doesn't take a lot of thousand pound bombs to kill a carrier. Especially an old style carrier. Hits happening, hits are happening. He's hit, but did the bombs go? I have no idea. My goodness, that is... Oh! <laughs> they missed by two feet. That's a two freaking feet. That is freaking unbelievable. Oh, no, but this guy's got through fire, Dad. Has run out of missiles and he's got through. I'm not sure he can be stopped now. He's on his dive. Nothing can stop him now. Cannon firing. 5,000 feet. Those guns just aren't as good as modern Seawiz. Hits. Bombs drop. I don't know what's going to happen. Are they, they going to hit? Ah! They hit. Bombs got through, on target. That's 2,000 pounds of bombs, and it's setting off explosions, and fire, and kerosene's burning, and it's down. Oh, Argentinian carrier destroyed. It's now all about pride. Can the Argentinians do some damage? Can they get a bomb through on HMS Invincible? It seems unlikely being under this amount of pressure. The defense just wasn't quite strong enough to keep those sea harriers out. Violet's an emerge, as Violet tends to be. Pretty much a whole life. Missile out. Oh, 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 oh. Good dodge, Violet. Went right past your face. Simba Zim. Can't get that solution. Too many flares. Oh, good kill, Simba. Look at that. Gun kill. That was an anti-shipper as well, so well done. Okay, more anti-shippers coming in to do anti-ship stuff, but the carrier's down, so... He's probably just going into a dogfight, which he is. He's dogfighting with Matrix. Let them settle their differences. Another AV-8 coming in. It is a anti-shipper. Violet's very heavily merged. It appears to be Winchester, though. Indeed. Uh, do a thing, question mark? Let's Fox 4. Fox 4, do it. This guy's going in, he's going to be a former Condell class frigate. Oh, hits. That's fine. And he's off. Well done, oh. Violet. Good defense. Matrix still after this guy, but he is full of flares. Missile did not guide, it was put off by a flare. That's a hard thing to kill. More guns. More guns. Oh, hits from Matrix. More hits. Yeah, he's got to be down. He's got to be down. He took a whole bunch of 30 Mike Mike hits. It's a pilot kill. Oh, he took himself down doing it. Good kill, though. Defended the fleet. There's a thing going on. Bombs dropped, and I didn't see where they went, so... <gasps> a Condell class frigate's been destroyed. Three more frigates left. Oh, Argentinians. Has anyone got through on the British? No one managed to get through on the British. That's yeah, a wall of Harriers to try yeah, to it get is. through. It is. It is a wall of freaking Harriers. They just killed so many. I don't think any more Argentinians are going to spawn. Well, they can't anyway because the carrier's dead. Uh, use your lives. You've got now reds and then you're done. Try and make some good use of your lives. Violet's doing what she does, hunting down the last man. Let's have a look at kills while we're here. Violet Moon, top killer. Very nice. Cannonball, Simba, Matrix. Okay, there is one AI anti-shipper and he is going for, he's going for broke. 
Can he make it through? I highly doubt it. Oh, more bombs going down. Oh, we got hit. It's another Condell hit. Second Condell dead. Awkward. Oh, third Condell hit. They are making mince meat of that Argentinian fleet. Uh, where is Violet? Oh, Violet's found the anti shipper. Wolf has found the prey. And the ship has had anti ship has had to go defensive. That will stop him getting through. Oh no, more have spawned. Well, that's the problem, Valley Views, because I had to spawn them in like this. I, to be honest, I didn't think the carrier would be dead by now. Never mind, let's let them carry on. Why the heck not? Can't do anything to stop them. Uh, four more Skyhawks have just spawned in, guys. They, I guess they're the last spawn. May as well run it to the dang end. Cannibals diving after a ship. Pretty beefy guns on those landers. Just gonna go around. A wise choice, sir. Pilot's still fighting. Pilot, have you got any weapons at all? Got guns. Okay, the last uh, AV-8B has taken off. The last AI, finally. Right, can these guys make it through now? They've slipped through. They, are, they may have just slipped through the net. Look at their altitude. They've slipped through because of their, their altitude, I think. That guy just didn't see him. It's because he's an anti-ship as well. He's got no interest in shooting other anti-ships down. Oh, Violet! Oh, Violet just got shot at by that guy. These dogfights just go forever. And I like it. Good solution, Violet. Go on, go on, go on. Not quite, not quite there. Matrix is merged with an anti-shipper. Now this is interesting, valued viewers. Even if they get through, we won't count it because their carrier was already blown up. But just out of interest, and as a bit of Rowenge, I wonder, I wonder. And we've got a Matrix kill on the Harrier. Boom, defending the fleet. Immediately merged with another one. Sending defensive. Alexa up to the north, taking care of uh, whoever the heck was up there. There's a missile from fire, Dad. Flash. Oh, well done. Violet, of course, destroying him. Woo, well done. Can she stop the anti-shippers now, though, is the question. I've only got 83 left in the gun. Okay, a thing's happening here. Oh, big old merge here. It's all the way. Spoofed by the flares. Problem with these old sidewinders. Just get spoofed by all the flares. Everyone's firing their missiles off, but this guy's just putting so much heat out compared to the heat of his engine. I think that was a friendly kill. Ah. That's actually slightly awkward. I won't win the war, gents. Oh, nibble with that. Oh, it's a sea harrow. Oh. Yeah. See how he came in. That war's not going to be okay. That's, that's your last life, last life, guys. You cannot respawn. Alexa, you're in your last life. Um, come out to the map now and watch the last four anti-shippers sneaking around the edge at 500 feet. In real life, I'm pretty sure that'd be picked up. Harriers, you can keep spawning because you've still got your carrier. I would suggest going for the anti-shippers. So Alexa versus three Harriers. Oh, no. Just not quite there. With the timing. Alexa, you're out. You're watching. Copy. Last element to go through is these four anti-shippers that have somehow snuck around without anyone seeing them. Apart from Violet Moon. Of course Violet Moon's seen them. Violet Cap. Moon's a killer. Hello, Sim. Can I help you with a thing? Did you very clearly and distinctively tell me Alexa's full gamer tag? You gotta say it real loud, though. Alexa, power off. Ah, okay, okay. Does it work? We'll know in the comment section. Right. <laughs> I prefer Alexa, order 100 pounds potatoes, confirm.
Awkward. Oh, the, the Argentinian fleet's just getting decimated now. Yeah, bless their cotton socks. One more Condell left. Would not want to be any he's out of ammo. Would not want to be Condell right now. But, as a bit of face saving, four anti-shippers have got through on HMS Invincible. Now, this is interesting, because this did actually happen in real life. Um, A4s did actually get through on Invincible. When uh, north of the island on I forget on which day, they did even fire their missiles. The missiles were destroyed and they were destroyed. But technically, this did actually happen. Can Violet catch up? I don't think so. Even at 500 okay. knots. I have visual. Go on in Simba Wimba. Do a thing. Oh, I'm still a ways out, but oh. I have visual. Can you be the hero? That's the question. Run out gun ammo. I feel like they could probably reload, but in game, not so much. No, I take I was wrong. They're not out gun ammo. Oh, they're definitely down to one Condell now. Oof. It is Cannibal going to finish the last Condell off. Going to add a little bit of lead. Max speed, about 23 knots. Bombs away. A very hard target to hit with unguided bombs. Has he got the eye of the tiger? No, he hasn't! Oh, my oh. That was close. I did a little hit. bit of damage. Got an 8%. Oh, yes, you did. You nicked him. You nicked him. Violet Moon is diving down on this sucker. She hasn't got the speed. Harrier too draggy. But Simba, not so much. Simba, 10 miles. And they are break. Ooh, only 10 miles from Invincible. She's pretty much going to have line of sight now. I'm surprised she hasn't started firing her own missile. Oh, look at that. Sea Dart out. Sea Dart, really interesting looking missile. Look at that. Actually, a pretty decent missile. Sea Dart shot down. Um, A4s, they shot down, I think, anti-ship missiles as well, in the real conflict. And that is going to be one anti-shipper down, there's not much you can do to evade that. Funking old warhead, and another one, doing Zibber's work for him. She can defend herself, she's a 1970s carrier. Simba merged, Simba doing his, doing his job. Taking one of them, but one's got by him. What's going to happen now? One's got by him. And here comes the sea dart. Oops, sea dart. Woo! It's a, it's a real chubber of a missile. I'm a fan of sea dart. Oh, nice. And that leaves just one baddie left. The Simba's merging with. And sea dart is out. Out. Dead. Hold well on, guys. Pausing now. End of game. Solid thrashing by the British, as, to be honest, I thought it would be. They've got a better carrier with better weapons. The frigates were the same. Uh, the planes were about equal in terms of maneuverability and kinematically, but the missiles were a bit better on the blue side as they were in real life. In terms of pilot skill, it seemed about even on either side, about the amount of kills and stuff. But at the end of the day, they just swarmed. Also, the launch rate is really important. The launch rate of the Invincibles, 20 seconds per plane faster than the... Argentinian carrier, it's going to make a massive difference. Uh, so it's probably how it should have been. Uh, thoughts from my guys? Yeah, it really went as expected. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much the way I thought it would go. Absolute whooping. Wait, 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 wait. There were a lot of people who said it was an even fight. I thought uh, that. I thought <laughs> that. <laughs> Everyone, now everyone's like, nope, that's the way I thought it would go. <laughs> no, I thought it would be a lot more even because the A4 and the AV8, I thought, were closer in capability for air to air. They were, and A4 shot, A4 shot a lot of, um, if, as you'll see back in the video, most of the Sea Harriers were shot down. Only about about 10 alive at the end. So they shot 20 Sea Harriers down, but but the fact is 30 Skyhawks were shot down. So the rate was kind of 2 to 3 or 3 to 2. As but Simba and I land on the Invincible. Go on in. Okay, Violet wants to land, and this guy wants to go and bomb the Condell, so let's do that. I'm not sure if he can hit a moving ship. We will find out. It was nice doing um it was nice doing a 1980s one guys about all the long range guided missiles and all that stuff. Oh, we've got some evasion from the Condell. It's gonna make it super hard to hit. Hitting ships with unguided bombs is an incredibly difficult thing to do, as they found out in World War II. Bombs away. Look at that roll, he's putting a massive roll on it, and good dodge skipper. That is literally how what they were doing in World War II. They were, they were doing all this dodging and evading to uh, put the bombs off. It worked. Or he, he did take some damage. Violet, did you land? Come on there, Violet. First carrier landing. Don't screw it up. BSI. BSI. Think great. Think great. Jesus Christ. Little, though. 
That was close. I'm on a boat. Little further, little further. Okay, you're aboard. Wheel break. Well done, pilot. Hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you later.